Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the uh, soft tree and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instrument and organ. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. We always want to keep praise in our mind, in our heart, regardless of what's going on. We always want to have that, you know, on the inside. Because even in the worst of times, the praise can give us victory. And so this song, I don't remember, I think Jay Moss sang it. And um, he said, there's a praise on the inside that I can't keep to myself. A holler stirring up from the depths of my soul. So excuse me if I seem a little giddy or maybe even strange. But praise is the way I say thanks. And so, you know, just being thankful and just praising him, even when we're going through the wilderness, even when we're going through the hard times, we can still praise him. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that just, that song just was in my mind this week when, it, uh, when I was driving and uh, I was like, I think I want to sing that song. Mm. And and I do have the music on my other computer. And um, but I didn't bring it. And but I just wanted to share that, you know, praise is the way we say thanks. Mm -hmm. But praise is also the way that we get the victory. And praise the the message today. And, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you the title now, but I'll wait. Uh, for when he starts the, the thing, uh, dealing with discouragement, dealing with discouragement is what I'm going to talk about today. And, um, and I want to, I don't think I have it in my notes. I don't remember. But anyway, I have been going through, um, a life study. Yeah, I do have it in here somewhere. A life study through the book of Psalms. So every morning, uh, I would get up and um, and I would go through some portion. Well, I went all the way through from from chapter one, you know, all the way to one fifty, and um, I started just in the past week or so. I don't remember exactly what day, but. I would wake up to music in my head and just songs of praise and songs of worship would, was, was, that's how I would wake up. And so I finished reading um, the last one, Psalm 150, which I read every uh, time we have a service, service. And I finished that. Um, day before yesterday and I was wondering if I would wake up to music again mm -hmm. and so um, yesterday when I woke up immediately instead of me paying attention I was I was thinking about the day I was having to go to work and all this other and so I don't know I, I don't remember if there was a song because it was soon, you know, covered up by my uh, worldly thoughts, I guess you could say, because it's things of the world, you know, going to my job and all that is part of the world. And so anyway, um, but this morning I woke up with a song and the song I woke up with this morning was He's Able. He's able. And um, I should have sent Bob that song 
uh, so he could play it. I didn't even think about it till just now, but um, he's able. I'll, I'll, I'll have to find it and uh, anyway, uh, you know, so, so maybe you can hear. And, and I, like the, I like the music, I like the words, um, and whenever it comes on, uh, I do Pandora, and whenever it comes on Pandora, when I'm driving down the street, I'm like all in, watch out people around me when I'm driving. <laughs> but uh, he is able. And so anyway, we'll go ahead and start the sentence. Huh? Oh, okay. So I guess I will have to do this, huh? Okay. Good way. Anyway, um, also this uh, this is a new month. This is a new month. Um, the new moon was sighted a couple days ago, and I got my you know message of the new moon sighting and all of it. All right, uh, Psalm one fifty. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him um, in the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organ. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. All right, all right. I'm going to jump right into the message today. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your many blessings. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. I thank you for who you are. I did just so many things, and I'll just praise you and give you glory. And I shall blessings upon this service today that you will speak through me to receptive parts, through me to receptive hearts and minds, and that we will all grow in spirit and in truth and that we will represent you well. And I ask these things, and I thank you even in advance, as I ask it in Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay. Um, I am, uh, you know, going to talk a bit about dealing with discouragement, because when we deal with discouragement, um, instead of letting it overcome, and defeat us, you know, it, it will defeat us if we don't, all right? So we have to deal with it. And um, it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, and there's times in everybody's life, um, you know, where we work hard and we do this and that and the other, and uh, it doesn't pan out the way we think. And so... Uh, the enemy tries to put things in our head to discourage us, to stop us, to make us, you know, uh, give up, to quit, all right? And so, um, you know, we have to kind of look at ourselves and see, you know, when, when, when things don't work out, um, not to let the enemy get a foothold on us, okay? And um, sometimes there are people that they, they get angry they blame other people. They um, uh, they start to get depressed and 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 all kinds of negative emotions in in their body. And um, so anyway, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven and uh, and it says, "For I know the thoughts that I think toward you," saith Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. 
He wants to give us an expected end. But what we expect may not be the same as what he had, his plan is for us. And so, um, you know, I told you about um, studying, you know, doing that light study on, on um, the Psalms. And I'm going to be talking about that through the message, different things um, that I want to point out. And um, the Psalms depict... and. This is this was so interesting to me as I read it. I read it in a different light. You know, sometimes we read the Psalms like Psalm 23, you know, and we just take that and um, uh, and and it's good, you know, it's good. But when you read the whole Psalm through the book, all the all of it together, you start to see the life of King David. You start to see what, and and you may even at times relate to how he feels about certain things. And so, uh, you know, so the, the psalm depicted his mental and his emotional state uh, from time to time. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of go through this. I'm going to go through my notes. Um, and he was... He was made king of Israel, but at the time he was made king of Israel, and, and the Most High is the one that said, told Samuel to do it. By the time that happened, Saul was still king. And, but Saul wasn't doing right. He wasn't acting right. And so he was not um, fit to be king. And so the Most High chose David, a man after the heart of the Most High God. All right. And so in um, 1 Samuel 13, and I'm going to read chapter 13 and 14. I'm sorry, verses 13 and 14. Um, you know, Saul had, had gone to the dark side. Hit, hit Star Wars people here. All right. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Saul had gone to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at one point he even consulted with a witch and, and all that, you know. Um, in 1 Samuel 13, chapter 13, verses 13 and 14, it says, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandments of Yahweh thy Elohim, which he commanded thee. Um, for now... Would Yahweh have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever? But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Yahweh hath sought him a man after his own heart. And Yahweh hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which Yahweh commanded you. All right. And then in, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, all the way um, you know, to the end, of 1 Samuel altogether, and I'm not going to read that, but when you get a chance, you know, you can read that. You can tell how Saul sought to uh, uh, pursue David to kill him. He wanted him out of the picture. And so um, uh, 1 Samuel, and, and I will read, in fact, I will read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 23. 1 Samuel uh 16 verses 14 through 23 okay and the spirit of Yahweh departed from Saul and an evil spirit from Yahweh troubled him you see, when you're not following the directions and doing what the Most High wants you to do, <coughs> He is going to step aside and He's going to let, because He protects us and He guards over us. Mm -hmm. And when He takes His hand off of us or moves away from us, that leaves the space for the enemy to come in. All right? So that's what happened to Saul. The enemy came in. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now. An evil spirit from Yahweh troubleth thee. 
and our uh, our master now command thy servants which are before thee to seek I should have brought my glasses up here to seek out a man who is a cunning player on the harp and it shall come to pass when uh, the evil spirit from Yahweh is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well that shows you what music will do the power of music all right and Saul said unto his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of his servants and said, Behold, I have sent, I have seen a son of Jesse, both, uh, excuse me, Bethlehemite, um, Be hmm. behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in manners, and a comely person, and Yahweh is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse stood, uh, I'm sorry, and Jesse took an uh, a donkey laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David his son unto Saul and David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer and Saul went uh, sent to Jesse saying let David I pray thee stand before me for he hath found favor in my sight and it came to pass when the evil spirit from um, Elohim was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. All right, now, here Saul wasn't doing right. The enemy, the Most High, he had the enemy come in, let him come in, and uh, uh, torment Saul. And, but the music... It's the music that came mm -hmm. and the enemy had to leave. When we're in a situation where all these negative feelings start to come about, put on some music. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people don't understand the power of the music, but put the music on. If, if you don't have any device or anything around you, start to sing praise to the Most High. It will change the atmosphere. All right. Let me let me let me go on. All right. Um, let's see. There were. Um, let's see. Well, I've already said that, but there are times when discouragement will come in, even with David. Because, like I said, at first it was all good. Saul started to hate David when he found out that David was taking his place. And so, um, let's see, I think I have, yeah. So what happened, you know, David had to leave. David had to get out of there for to, so that Saul couldn't kill him. And so when he left, you know, he he had men with him and all of that, and he um, he was kind of struggling emotionally, mentally. You know, um, everything turned; all the tables had turned on him, and so he started writing the songs, the songs, and when you start looking at them as songs of him expressing how he felt on the inside, what he was thinking, how it, the, 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 the way his heart was, you know, and looking at this as songs. This is there, um, Psalm 1, no, let's see, Psalm 13, 1 through 6. Let's take a look at that. Psalm 13, verses 1 through 6. It says, how long will thou forget me? Because he's praying. You know, Saul's after him. He's praying. He's running. 
he's hiding, you know, and 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 he's not hearing from the most high the way he was thinking, the way he had it heard him in the past, what he was expecting. He says, How long wilt thou forget me, O Yahweh, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? having sorrow in my heart daily. How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Yahweh, my Elohim. Lighten my, uh, mine eyes, lest I sleep the uh, sleep of death. Lest my enemy say <coughs> I have prevailed over him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. And I will sing unto Yahweh because he hath dealt bountifully with me. So even in all of this, he gives praise. He's praying. He's still not hearing. Sometimes people get discouraged because they don't hear from the Most High when they think they should, you know, they can't wait. They wait. They're anxious. They want to hear. But sometimes, you know, you remember, um, I think it was Daniel that prayed, and um, and it took a long twenty one days, twenty one days, uh, and he was praying, and finally the angel showed up, and he said, "I would have been there, except I had to fight the enemy in the spirit realm." But I would have been, you know, and if I didn't have to do that, I would have been here sooner. Okay? So sometimes uh, those things happen. The prayer, the answer to the prayer was sent out. But the enemy's trying to block it. He's trying to keep you from getting it because he wants to discourage you. He wants to bring you down. All of us, not me too. I'm not, I'm not you know, just saying just you guys, but me too. He wants to bring us down. But we continue to keep that praise. We continue to have trust and we have faith in the Most High. All right. So anyway, um, he was distressed. Psalm, 9, Psalm uh, 18 talks about him being distressed. I'm not going to read that part. But, um, you know, I, I'll read a portion of, um, yeah, I'll read verse 1. Psalm 18 and 1. That's just a few page over. 18 and 1. He said, I will love thee, O Yahweh, my strength. Actually, verse 2, uh, Yahweh is my rock and my fortress and my uh, deliverer, my Elohim, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. And, and, and so uh, verse 3 says, I will call upon Yahweh who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from my enemies. Even though he didn't see it, he believed it. He trusted it. And he continued to praise. You know, so this this is another song that he that he wrote about that. Now, not all of Psalms, uh, the Psalms were written by David. Some of them were um, Asaph and, and, and a few others as well as we get later into uh, further into it but the majority written by uh david and uh you know i don't we don't know what the um uh tone the music the notes or any of that other we just know that these are songs okay mm -hmm. that so he just kept singing even though he was in the midst of all of this, he kept singing. He just kept writing those lyrics. All right. Um, so it's during this time he wanted to continue to do the right thing, though. He didn't want the enemy to get him to a point where he just says, "You know what? I'm I'm not going to bother with this. I'm just going to I'm just going to go find Saul and I'm going to kill him." But when that time came, when he he didn't find Saul. He was in a cave and Saul went in the cave to use the bathroom and he saw Saul and he had the opportunity to kill him, but he didn't. And what he 
what he thought of was the scripture where the Most High said, touch not mine anointed. Okay? And when you think about who we are in him, he has anointed us for purpose. Yes. And so, we, he doesn't want anyone messing with us either. Okay? Anyway, all right. Um, That's powerful. So, so anyway, he said in, um, let's see, 19, that I, did I just read that? Okay, in 19, let's go to 19, uh, verses 13 and 14. In 19, verses 13 and 14, he said, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from uh, the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Okay, or my master and my redeemer. And so he, he even in all this, he struggled. He wants to make sure he is not going to sin. And so he's telling them, uh, you know, that in, in, in the presumptuous sins, those presumptuous sins, that's arrogance and pride. Um, you, you know, just in case you didn't know what that presumptuous sin is, it's being um, uh, uh, insolent also. And so he wanted to make sure he was not going to be lifted up in pride. He was not going to uh, be arrogant or anything. He just wanted to do what was the right thing to do. And so um, he didn't want to get he didn't want to get the big head, you know, uh, and all of that, because um, he recognized he also recognized that people. Um, uh, and, and when we see it today, actually, there are people that get in certain positions and then they they want to think that, you know, they're all that and they're better than everybody else and all of that kind of thing. And so David didn't want to be in that situation. All right. All right. He was submissive to the Most High and he trusted him. Psalm 31, 1. Psalm 31, 1. And that says, In thee, O Yahweh, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. So he, you know, he he just submitted himself to him. He trusted him. In verse 5, it, um, Into thy hand, this is where I was talking about his him submitting himself. Into thine hand, I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Yahweh Elohim of truth. Okay? So this scripture also, and there are several others in here. There were scriptures of prophecy concerning Yahshua um, and him being uh, crucified. Um, let's see. Now, David knew, he knew, he also knew what was going on behind his back. Um, let's see, in verse 13, in the same group of scriptures, verse 13, he said, For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. So he knew what was going on behind his back. And still, you know, he trusted the Most High. At one point, I don't know if I have that in my notes. Yeah, I do. Uh, 41, let's look at 41 1. Forty-one one says, Blessed is he that consider the poor, um, Yahweh will deliver him okay, uh, in the time of trouble. He will deliver him in the time of trouble. And then go down to verse 9, and it said, um, Yea, mine own familiar friend, whom I trusted, 
which did eat of my bread hath lift up his hill against me. Hill against me. So even his best friend turned against him. I mean, it was just so much going on in his life. And, you know, he could have allowed discouragement to come in, but he didn't. He just kept the faith. He kept praising. Um, you know, and so anyway, his best friend even, in verse 10 through 12, um, let me see, 41, 10. But thou, O Yahweh, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them. Requite them. Don't quiet them. By this I know that thou, uh, thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. This lets him know. The enemy hadn't triumph, triumphed over him, hadn't got the victory over him. And so, um, even though he's going out through all this emotionally, the enemy is not making any headway here. So he knows then that he has the favor of the Most High. We have the favor of the Most High. No matter what we are going through, we need to remember that. And as for me, thou upholdest me in my uh, integrity and setteth me before thy uh, face forevermore. Forever. And so he has um, also, uh, you know, favor and he... Uh, uh, is given credit to the Most High for his integrity. He's given credit to the Most High for, um, you know, just everything. He's he's not taking it for himself and say, well, I did this and I, I trusted you and I, you know, he says, it, I put my trust in you, but he's not doing it in a boastful way. Um, and so, you know, he's still being submissive. He's still trying to do the right thing. And he is giving the most high credit for him staying the course. Okay. We can't do anything by ourselves. And so the most high, he has his spirit. He put his spirit in us. And um, so we can have confidence and we can know that he is with us. All right. Um I mentioned that there were some psalms by others, and so there's a space in there. Psalm 101, verses 1 through 3, that's where David was still singing. He was still singing, and he sang about the benefits of the Father. And uh, this is one of my one of my favorite uh, passages right here. Um, and it's, Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfied thy mouth um, with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. And he goes on and on with this. And um, these are just some of the benefits. And so if a person, you know, if you ever get to a point where you're starting to feel, you know, and you can't, you can't let the, the negative feeling linger. But if you start to feel negative, read about his benefits, his benefits. All right. Um, David continued to write music. Um, let's see. And I mentioned that there were some prophecies in some of this. And that's Psalm 110, verses 1 through 7. And it says, And Yahweh uh, said unto, uh, And Yahweh said unto my master, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemy thy footstool. All right. There's... Probably there's so much I could say about this scripture here. And um, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to have time to go through all of this. But this is, um, 
This is the same thing in Matthew twenty-two forty-four, um, and this is this is Yahweh telling Yahshua, and Yahshua was telling the the Pharisees uh, this same thing um, that the Most High had told him, uh, because this is him talking to uh, Yahshua and saying, uh, telling him. Um, you know, that uh, he is to sit down at his right hand until he makes the enemy his footstool. Now, right now, Yahshua is at the right hand of the Most High, and the time has not yet come for the enemy to be the footstool. That'll happen later, okay? Uh, that is still in the future. Um, uh, the other scripture I mentioned, um, let's see, Acts 2, 32 through 35, tells us that he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Um, also, uh, it talks a little of, about Melchizedek. We kind of talked a little bit about that uh, before Bible study today. And uh, there's a whole lot of information, uh, connections in regards to Melchizedek, and a lot of them, a lot of people think that Melchizedek was actually Yahshua um, that was here and with Abraham that Abraham gave the tithes to and so uh, um, but Hebrews talks about um, the priesthood so I want to kind of talk about the priesthood part of it because uh, Melchizedek was a priest that David had given the tithes to after he, um, uh, you know, won the battle and collected all the spoils, he gave a tenth, all right? And so um, Melchizedek was the high priest, and um, the, the things were to be given, the tenth was to be given to the high priest. Now, this is in Psalms, and this happened way back in Genesis, all right? And for those people that don't believe in tithes, well, um, go back to Genesis. A lot of people want to point to uh, Malachi, and that's all right uh, because there's a blessing, you know, when you give. But in uh, in Genesis, that's you know when we see this with Abraham. Okay. Um, okay. So moving on, the, the the thing that I want to bring out though is Melchizedek being the high priest. And um, they had different people that were the high priests, even during the time of Yahshua, that they would give the, um, the sacrifices, the offering, the tithes to, even in the time of Yahshua. And so um, um, the high priest now is Yahshua. He is our high priest, and he represents us with the most high. He, uh, he intercedes for us. And so, um, you know, that position there has been transferred because there's no more need for any of that. Um, and um, so, you know, uh, Yahshua is our high priest. Um, Let's see. I'm about done here. I want to, let's see. Uh, I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you what discourage means. Discourage means um, a lack of courage. It means um, to lose confidence. It means to lose enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. It means to be disheartened. And so uh, there's another scripture that says, let not your heart be troubled, uh, neither let it be dismayed, you know. And so uh, we, don't, we don't want that to enter in. I'm not saying it won't come about because things happen and sometimes they can be devastating things that could just, you know, cause us to step back and sit down. And uh, those are the times most 
where we need to get close to him, where we need to sing as hard as it would be to sing those songs of praise, to worship the most high. And it could be hard. It, I mean, but this is what gets us through. And so, um, you know, David was a good example of that. He just, I mean, can you imagine your best friend turning against you? Whoever that is, your best friend. And so that will be hard for anybody. Um, when it comes to how we live because of the finished work of Yahshua, and even um, in the time of, of Abraham on back, we walk by faith and not by sight. Abraham walked by faith. And so he believed the Most High. One of, uh, one of my key verses, Acts 4 and 20. Acts 4 and 20. Um, and it used to be, now one of my key verses used to be, and I mean it still is, but it took a, like a second place. It used to be, I can do all things to Yeshua who strengthens me. Okay? And that's still one, but this other one, when, <laughs> this just really, uh, this really got me. Okay. Um, what did I say? Acts 4. That's Romans. I'm sorry. Romans 4 and 20. Um, Romans 4 and 20. And I, and I could just tell you what it is, but anyway. Romans 4 and 20 just impressed me so much when I read it. The first time I read it, I was like, whoa. Um, and it's talking about Abraham. And it says, he staggered not, and in his verse 21 as well, he staggered not at the promise of Elohim through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to Elohim being fully persuaded that that which he promised, he was also able to perform. The reason that there was one word in here that really got my attention, and that word is staggered. He staggered not. I mean, he knew the promises of the Most High, and he, I mean, he just took it in. Okay. He didn't flinch. He didn't step back. He didn't question or wonder or anything. He's like, okay. So when the Most High said, I want you to go, he said, okay. I, that just got me right there. He, you know, he staggered not. All right. And so this is how we need to be. When he tells us, you know, when he leads us and guides us, don't, don't stagger. Just do it. All right. Just do it. All right. Anyway. Um, we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, in Hebrews 11, people call it the faith chapter. And it's got all these different ones in there. Um, and in reading about all these different people, every one of them had expectations. Every one of them had plans of what they wanted to do. They had a picture in their mind of how things were going to turn out. I was talking about David. David wanted to build the temple for the Most High God. He, he I mean, that was the desire of his heart because he wanted a permanent place. You know, the tabernacle was temporary, but he wanted a permanent place. And so, so he... He had all of these things made and he brought um, he brought all of the supplies that were necessary and he had everything ready. And then the most high. In fact, let's look at first Chronicles and this is our last scripture. First Chronicles chapter 22. First Chronicles chapter 22. And it talks about it talks about this, and I'm going to read verses one through ten. If I can get to it, I don't know why these pages want to stick together. All right, 
right. Starting at verse 1. So then David said, This is the house of Yahweh Elohim, and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded his gather, um, gather, commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel, and he set masons to hew wrought stones to build the house for Elohim. And David prepared iron in the abundance for the nails for the door of the gates and for the joinings and brass in abundance without weight. Also cedar trees in abundance uh, for the uh, Zidonites. Mm. And they of Tyre also I mean, brought much cedar wood to David. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for um, Yahweh must be exceeding magnificent of fame and of glory throughout of throughout all the countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Then he called for Solomon, his son, and he charged him to put, to build the house for Yahweh Elohim of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of, the, of Yahweh my Elohim. But the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. And he shall build a house for my name, and he shall... Be my son, and I shall be his father, and I will establish my throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now here, David had gotten everything together. He wanted to do it. But the Most High had told him, no, that's not for you. This is for your son to do. And so even though he had plans, he had made plans, he had gathered the materials his plans uh, were changed by the Most High. And he said, let your son do it. Let Solomon do it. Now, David didn't put up a fight or an argument or try to plead his case. He obeyed. And even in the time of discouragement, we continue to obey. Um, Sometimes, and I said that was my last scripture, but I want to give you one more. Psalm 27, 14. Because sometimes he'll say, okay, but I want you to wait. And Psalm 27, 14 says, <coughs> wait on Yahweh, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on Yahweh. And that's what we need to do. It will strengthen our heart and we will have good courage instead of discourage. Okay, that's my prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your blessing. And I ask you to just continue to order our steps, that you would lead us and guide us, that you would strengthen us, and that you would open our eyes to see your truth even more so than ever before. And I give you glory as I ask these things in Yahshua's name. Amen. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, just one, one nine. All right. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And the Lord bless thee and keep thee, and make His face shine upon thee, and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee, and give you peace. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah. All right. All right.